I could easily grab this part and rotate it, but then everything would be lying flat on the ground. That wouldn't help much. Let's redo that, but let's do it in 3D. This requires some patience with this aged tablet PC. To record and create complex diagrams at the same time. Isn't a good idea on this machine? Let's take the surface XYZ. Surface makes it hard to read off numbers, but often gives a good idea of what's happening. Now switch hold on again. So that the diagram isn't cleared when I add the arrows. Adding the color bar is a good idea so that we know the meaning of the colors. And quiver for the arrows. Which reminds me of it being a good idea to show you where these arrows lie. These arrows do not point along the surface of the function. The gradient does not point up the hill or down to the valley. Turing it slowly. The machine is overwhelmed again. The arrows are in there too. I have two variables. That means in this case, what's, why does it still turn? The gradient is a two-dimensional vector. I want to look from the side. The gradient is a two-dimensional vector. It lies in the plane. It lies on the map, so to speak, in the plane of the map, in 2D. Even though the function forms a mountain in 3D, I hope it helps to have seen this geometric connection this way. The gradient points in the direction of the locally strongest slope, perpendicular to the lines of constant height but it lies in the plane of the map. If you have two variables, the gradient is a 2D vector, no 3D vector. It doesn't steeply point up the hill or steeply down to the valley, but lies in the plane of the map. By the way, you see that the function surface is pretty leveled in the middle and the gradient is short. The surface gets steeper here and the gradient becomes longer.